as far as the postseason is concerned. And um, I still have a major problem. Last year, it was an issue with the Dodgers and the Giants. The Giants were really hindered despite having the best record. They should never have played the Giant Dodgers, who had the second best record in the first round. They did not fix that because this year, the same kind of scenario could develop. Uh, maybe not to the extent of last year, but there are some situations this year that I don't like either. Bottom line is, if you win a division, that should not automatically put you as the third seed. And in this case, the third seed in the American League Central and the NL Central might have a worse record than the wild card teams, yet they get the higher seed, which obviously helps the two seed and not the one seed. And in this case, the Dodgers might have to play Atlanta in the first round and say instead of Milwaukee, Mets would get them. And the Yankees, if they had the best record, might have to play Toronto in the first round while Houston would play the, the Guardians. Now, I mean, obviously, Toronto far more dangerous, but that's neither here nor there. Let's do the NL first because it's pretty compelling right now. The Dodgers are going to end up with the one seed, so they are going to be the one, and the Mets are going to be the two. So, I mean, I, they're five games behind, whatever it might be. They still play each other, and the Mets are putting pedal to the metal. They've done a heck of a job, and I think they would be the favorite if they met, even if they didn't have home field because because of those two starters. But, I mean, right now, L.A. would be one and the Mets would be two. I mean, outside of that, I think the interesting development in the NL is the Phillies, who have put themselves in a situation right now. They have basically 39-19 and 19 since Girardi was fired. The Phillies have put themselves in a situation right now where they're going to be a playoff team in the NL, and they get a chance to actually be the fourth seed, which would get them home field for three games. Only two games back of Atlanta, and they have three series left with Atlanta for the year. Year, so they're not out of it from that standpoint. Philadelphia has done a very good job, and they, their schedule is not impossible. They haven't played the Reds yet. Lots of games against the Marlins. They finish against the Nationals. All those things. So Philadelphia is story number one. Story number two is the NL Central race, which, you know, seven games remain between Milwaukee and St. Louis. The Brewers have not played well. We'll get a report on them a little later on. Cardinals just came off the three-game sweep of the Yankees. They're a little up and down because they don't have great starting pitching, but St. Louis currently Currently is two games up on the Brewers, and that only might be for one spot uh, in the postseason because with Philadelphia, Atlanta, and San Diego, the second place team in the NL Central may not get in, and right now that would be Milwaukee. Padres are not playing well right now. They shut out again last night. They can't score, which you would think would be corrected. Uh, you know, again, bullseye on their back. We discussed this yesterday. I wonder about San Diego in their constitution. What is in them? Are they going to show some toughness? Uh, but right now, forget the Dodgers. They're not catching them. You know, they're going to grapple with that home field, with that fourth seed. And, you know, listen, it's funny. You'd rather almost be the five seed and not get the Braves in that first round. But San Diego should make the playoffs. So right now, Mets, uh, the Dodgers the one, the Mets the two. The NL Central winner, which currently is St. Louis, would be the three. Braves would be the four. Padres would be ahead of San Diego. That would be the five. And then the uh, uh, Phillies would be ahead of San Diego. They'd be the five. And then San Diego would be the six. San Diego then would have to go play the NL Central winner on the road, almost an advantage to be the sixth seed, while the Phillies would have to go to Atlanta to play all three games there. Bottom line is you got five teams for four spots. One of these teams will get knocked out. Mets and Dodgers are in. In the American League, it's a little more interesting because we know the Yankees right now are the one seed, and it's close, and Houston is the two seed, and that could be significant based on opponents in big spots later in the year uh, as far as uh, first round is concerned. And then, of course, if they do meet, home field between Houston and the Yankees would be significant. Uh, Houston won a season series if they finish tied. And one other thing we should mention here, remember, there's no tiebreaker game to make the playoffs. So if two teams for the wild card finish tied on that Wednesday, October 5th, I think it is, they don't play the game. It's head-to-head -head record will determine who makes the playoffs. So there's no tiebreaker game to determine who gets in as that fifth or sixth seed. So keep that in mind. Anyway, in the American League, you really got seven teams for this four spots. You got the three teams in the AL Central who are probably going to battle for one spot, Guardians, Twins, and White Sox. White Sox are two out, they're two over 500. Minnesota will play at uh, the White Sox and play six games against Chicago late in the year, so we keep an eye on that, while the Guardians will play six against Kansas City. So probably those three for one spot rush to 85. Those are not very good teams, uh, but there'd be a little drama in the American League Central. And then in the other scenario, that would put three teams in. And then you'd have Seattle, Tampa, the Orioles, and Toronto. Uh, those four will play for the three spots. Now, right now, this is the 
first game all year was last night when Toronto played in Camden Yards. Toronto and the Orioles play a lot of games. 14 to go uh, in the American League East, which I did not realize. Toronto's got two more trips into Baltimore after this one, and Baltimore's got two trips to Toronto. Tampa and the Orioles will finish their season series this weekend in Tampa early, and then Tampa, of course, is in the mix an awful lot uh, down the road here with the, the Blue Jays. Now, remember, Seattle's in an easier division, and after Seattle gets by the Yankees these next two games, uh, and right now, they, you know, and they're in playoff positioning. Once they get by the Yankees, their schedule eases up big time because they play a lot of those teams in the American League West. They play the Nationals, they play the Guardians, and they finish up with Detroit. So you would figure that Seattle has a little bit of a scheduling advantage over these teams in the American League East. The Red Sox are two under 500. They're done. We're not going to talk about the Red Sox until you get over 500 and make a little headway. They have been awful for a long period of time, so forget Boston. And we're going to forget the Giants right now. I know the Giants are dangerous, but we're going to forget them right because they got a couple of pitchers, Rendon, Webb, but we're going to forget about San Francisco right now. They're still four or five games back of the wild card, and they're under 500, which is my old rule. If you're not 500 or better, I don't want to talk about playoffs, and so this is not the NBA. Uh, so from that standpoint, the Giants and the Red Sox are going to put on the back burner. So you have the seven for the four in the American League, and you got the five for the four in the National League. I think the team that might be left out right now is Milwaukee. I, I don't like the way Milwaukee has played. I think there's a bad vibe in that clubhouse with the hater trade. They still don't hit enough. I mean, we'll get a report on them a little later, but I'd be worried about the Brewers. They haven't played well for a period of time. In the American League, I, I know I think Minnesota will hang on and win the division, which would eliminate Cleveland and would eliminate the White Sox. I think Minnesota will get the division. They did make some moves at the deadline, which you like. And that would leave you then Seattle, the Rays, and the Blue Jays. I can't put the Orioles in the playoffs right now. I, I, to me, they're still more a feel-good story than they are a playoff story. Now, that could change, and they've done a heck of a job. They have four or five games over, and they've beaten everybody. But I still think that the Orioles are not going to make the postseason. So I'll say the Orioles, the, the Guardians, and the White Sox out in the American League. And I will say the Brewers are out in the National League. Again, the key thing, remember, there's no tiebreaker if somebody finished tied for a playoff spot. And also remember, if you're the first wild card, you get all three games at home. Uh, so, and if you win the division, you automatically get no worse than a three seed. Those are the two things that you need to keep an eye on. Playoffs will begin sometime. Uh, I, I, I don't know if they're giving them a day off after the season ends or not. It's probably going to begin on Friday, and I believe that is October 7th. The World Series this year will begin on Sunday night, October 30th. So because of the lockout, the World Series will be up late, and it's up against Monday night football, or Sunday night football, too, which you hate. But the World Series will be on Sunday night, October 30th. Uh, and, and if it's at Yankee Stadium at 8.30 at night, people are going to be screaming about that, too. Neither here nor there. We'll get to that a little later on. But that's when the World Series starts. I believe there's a day off after the regular season before the wild court round begins. I can have Sanford double-check that.